15, communication from Mayor Robert Garcia. Recommendation to receive and file report from the Arts Council for Long Beach. Thank, thank you. Uh, this was, I agendized this at a, uh, as, as a request from the Arts Council. So the Arts Council uh, requested some time to give the, the City Council an update uh, on a few items. And so with that, I will uh, turn this over to the Arts Council for a presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Garcia council members and city staff. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to talk just very briefly, thank you, um, about where we are at mid-year of, of this year, the first year of the implementation of our new strategic plan. And that new plan called for us to change the Arts Council and what we do very significantly. Instead of being a group who does things, we have um, become an organization who supports advocates and markets all of the fine work being done by Long Beach artists and arts organizations. That has been our major shift and it's a very exciting year for us. So the main goal of our new strategic plan is to better align the creative sector of Long Beach with the city's economic development goals. So our mission in that effort is to ensure that a vibrant art scene makes Long Beach the premier destination for residents, businesses, students, and visitors. Um, so in order to make this happen, we've been undergoing great change uh, to work towards our mission and our strategic goals. The first area of change for us has been to really reorganize our staff. We are a very different staff now than we were when we started our year. This reorganization has given us the opportunity to create new jobs and new roles for staff that focus on those marketing and advocacy areas. And I'd just like to ask the staff who are here, here tonight just to stand up and wave, identify yourselves. Um, very proud to have our new team of staff and interns here tonight and hope that you'll have the opportunity to meet them as they're out in the community in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you. As we think about reorganization, of course, the board is key to our, su to our success as an organization. And so the board, too, has been doing evaluation of um, our assets. And as we've been doing board inventory, um, as we have reorganized a system of new committees to help us carry out the work that we're undertaking, the board is very proud to recognize that we um, hold great diversity in terms of age, gender, artistic um, uh, backgrounds, and sexual orientation. As we look to build our board in the coming year, we look to extend and increase that diversity in the two areas that are key priorities for us, and that will be to increase our board diversity in the areas of geographic representation of more districts and also ethnic and racial diversity. Key to the success of our, our organization in the coming year, of course, is our fiscal health. And I am very proud to tell you that with the $50,000 matching grant that you awarded us at the beginning of the year for marketing the arts and culture in Long Beach, we have successfully matched dollar for dollar, $49,375 of that $50,000 grant. So that has given us the resources, the pool with which we can implement our marketing initiatives to the, the benefit of the arts and cultural community, but more importantly, to the whole city to create a vibrant art scene that will draw the new business and the creative workforce to, to our city. As well as matching dollar for dollar, what we're also doing with that grant is leveraging it. This is what we're using to uh, go out to big funding sources at the state level, at the national level, and foundations to leverage your matching grant to um, bigger ongoing grants. This takes time, so we'll be focusing on this through the end of this year and into next year. Advocacy is the way that we can, one of the main ways that was identified to us as a way to support the, the artists and arts community. So if we are to be effective in advocating, we must be engaged with our constituents. And so we look forward each month 
to an open conversation month every last Thursday. The board president, myself, other board and staff sit down with anybody who wants to come talk to us about issues that are on their mind in the arts community. Last meeting, we had over 40 artists and representatives of arts organizations show up for that open conversation. Um, it's also a part of our advocacy is doing research and creating the materials about the arts importance to the economic development of the city. And we will be sharing the report from that research with you very soon, hoping to continue a dialogue about how we can make the arts an ever more important part of our city's um, growth. Uh, we are also proud to report that we've created a new internship program whereby art students from Cal State Long Beach are placed in paid interns for which they also get credit from the university with the major arts institutions. We hope this will be a part not only of bridge building between the university and the arts community, but also um, it, we hope that this will be a part of finding ways to keep our arts uh, graduates in our community. All too often we lose them outside our community. So we're looking to work with the university to keep them here. Some of our other ongoing programs that are better known um, would be our continuing uh, grant making. Your allocation is what we re-grant out to the community through small grants and larger grants. Um, we continue our arts services whereby we uh, provide individual websites to artists, the 700 artists who are in our artist registry. And I'd just like to briefly tell you about a coming attraction, this mobile art space. Early stages yet, but within a couple of years, we plan to have this up and touring, and this is one of the things that we think will differentiate Long Beach Arts from other arts around here. No other city will have one of these. This was designed on behalf of the Arts Council, and we look forward to seeing it touring throughout our communities. I'm going to cut ahead to the area of marketing because this is so central to what we're doing this year. And I'm going to ask our new director of marketing and communications, April Economides, to talk a little bit about what she and her team are doing in this area. Thanks, Victoria. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as some of you know, I uh, just joined the Arts Council just over six weeks ago. And I just want to say I'm thrilled to join it at particularly this time in its evolution. I've watched and at one point been part of that um, years ago. And um, what drew me to want to be part of it now was its strategic redirection um, to do less programming and more marketing and promotion, as Victoria said, of the existing institutions and artists. Um, and also tying it into economic development, as we know, hopefully we all know, the arts are often the secret sauce behind a lot of economic development uh, efforts. They also raise student test scores and do other, you know, important things like that. Um, so briefly, um, so I'm brand new, the t much of my team is brand new, so we're just getting started. I've talked with um, all of either you directly or your staff, either proactively reaching out to you or vice versa. Um, so I'm uh, eager to get as much done as I can. Hopefully you've noticed some difference already. Um, one thing I want to mention, uh, which I've talked with about uh, many of you or your staff already, is that diversity is the foundation for which I base all of the marketing and promotions on. This is the lens through which I uh, make my professional decisions on um, and take that very seriously. And I don't just mean racial, gender, and the other diversities of our city. Um, I mean diversity of arts as well, like arts in the public sphere, fashion arts, uh, all sorts of different things. So we are currently busy working away, mostly behind the scenes, taking stock of what we can improve um, on our social media. We are redesigning the website right now. I could go on and on about all the different platforms and how we really want to thoughtfully look at what are we not doing a good enough job at, what can we do better at, um, engaging with the community around that, and also um, gearing up to do some really big things. So um, I really look forward to working with not only you and your staff, but the community. And as I always say to everyone, I'm here, open door. I can't wait to work with all of you more. And I thank you for your time. I'll turn it back to Victoria. And just to wrap up, to thank you once again for the opportunity to bring you this mid-year update on what we've been doing. 
and to say that I look forward to um, updating it again at the end of the year, when, by which time we believe that many of the initiatives we've started in the first eight months will be coming to fruition. And thank you again for your allocation of support that is what we can use along with our other fundraising um, to make the arts an ever more important part of our great city. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Thank you to, uh, to Victoria, April, and, and most importantly, thank you to all the interns and the, the new students. I think, uh, obviously, I think we're all believer, believers of opportunities for, for young folks and students to have a chance to uh, learn uh, new skills and get an educational experience. So thank you all for, uh, for being a part of that. So congratulate them. Good job, interns. And, and I'm going to open it up for public comment. This is a, well, first, is there a motion to, this is a receive and file. So if I can get a motion to receive and file. Uh, I got a motion and a second to uh, either of the, okay, let me go turn this over to public comment. And we already have somebody. So please, please come forward. Hello, my name is Karen Reeside, and I'm the space manager, acting executive director of the Cultural Alliance of Long Beach. And Long Beach has a very long history of uh, a strong artist community. And the artists have been a major component all throughout Long Beach. They are asked to give so much, and they do unstintingly, and oftentimes without recognition for their efforts and energy. Um, the, the Public Corporation for the Arts, known as the Arts Council, was founded in 1972 as a quasi-public organization to provide support for the arts in Long Beach, including Long Beach artists. Over time, this support, which was never really a large amount for the artists in the community, has trickled down and has been limited to a handful of artists, and quality artists, because we have such an abundance of artistic wealth in our community. The amounts of the grants that go to the majority of artists are small and too weak to do much to change the arts community, other than to entertain communities on the weekends, or change the art philosophy overall. Um, I'm excited that at least we're starting to look at the arts as an economic engine in our community. So the Arts Council has become the quasi-governmental agency for government support in the arts. This is really the only major funding for artists in the Long Beach community. Uh, it is vital that the Arts Council represent the community. We are the most diverse community in the United States, as listed by the census. And the Arts Council does not reflect this. And CALB has over 500 local artists that are members, and we want to change this. The Arts Council board has one person of color on it, and this has been an issue for more than Victoria's tenure, and there hasn't really been a consistent change. When they did their, spent two years doing their strategic plan, they questioned a number of people in the community. I believe they did over 50 interviews. They interviewed four artists. None of them were of color. This is the basis for this marketing plan that they're talking about. So we would like to request that the council consider establishing a cultural affairs department like other cities comparable of the size of Long Beach and that all artists are included in the processes for deciding what direction our arts community is going to go in. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council. I'm Efren Luna, a local artist, curator, and volunteer member of the Cultural Alliance of Long Beach and social media manager for the organization. I love that CALV is truly for the community and anyone can be part of. I consider myself not only an artist, but a cultural promoter. Been involved with CALV, I've learned firsthand of many, many needs of the artist community and community members who attend our events. People come to me and share their needs and concerns, and this made me look into what's needed in our city. I learned that it's not just about me, a collective, or any organizations, 
but that there is a real need for the entire community to be included. We all know of our diversity in our population. I feel that we need to extend the arts support to every, everyone, including minorities, that I feel are currently not represented enough. Long Beach is very dear to me. It's where I call home. I was raised in Long Beach. As a kid, I always did art. Uh, I took art in high school, and that's what made me go to study um, art in college. I'm a product of the city's educational system from elementary, middle school, high school, community college, and Cal State, all from this city. I know firsthand from experience that art was an alternative to the negative environment I grew up in. In the 1990s, there were very little options. Most of my friends ended, joining, ended up joining a gang, but art saved my life, and it's what gave me an opportunity. And even today, I cannot see myself without being an artist. I would like for other kids to have the opportunity, the same opportunity. An international city like Long Beach can no longer be without a cultural arts department any longer. The current system is not working. It has issues with lack of diversity and transparency. People have noticed this for, long, for a long time, but now people are beginning to speak. I witnessed Keith Fleming resigning from the Arts Council board because he saw the lack of inclusion and he didn't want to be part of that. I think it would be fair if the artist community would have a say in the arts, in the issues of the arts and culture in our city. The artist community really want to have a real voice. People want to be included and are really interested in seeing changes. The public funding can be better used to benefit more people in the community. Step towards a solution will be for the city to set up an arts and cultural affairs department that will be accountable to the taxpayers, unlike what's the case now with the Arts Council. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, Mayor, and uh, I'm, I'm proud to be here, but I'm really nervous. I'm not very good at public speaking, but hello to everybody on the council. I have been in Long Beach since I was 14 years old, and I'm 65 now, so that's a long time. And I've watched Long Beach change over the years. And as an artist, I have always felt like I've been kind of out there somewhere with no real support or anything. And then I found Kelb. I'm a member of Kelb. And they're wide open to any artist being a member and having places to show our work and everything. But I've become aware that there are too many limitations on artist access to grants, for example, or to places where we can display our work and, and have a show. Uh, I mean, Calb is wonderful, but there, I mean, it, Calb is all almost by themselves out there. I f learned about the Arts Council, but I've also learned that they, that they really underrepresent the actual artists. They don't really let us show who we are. They don't really give us the opportunity to display our work or, or to, uh, like the grants, for example. I did apply for a grant. I never heard back as to whether I would get it or not. I didn't get it, of course, but I never heard why. And that confused me terribly because knowing what they're looking for helps us to focus more on how we can get the help we need to survive. I live on a very limited income. I do my art on my kitchen table. I need space, and there is none. And I just want to appeal to the council to open your hearts to the artists, to us, the little people at the bottom of the heap who are struggling so hard to bring our art to the world. I paint the things around me that give me the joy and give me happiness and help me to be strong in my, in my own person. And all the artists represent some part of our society. It doesn't matter if we're pink with purple polka dots. What matters is that the artists are represented in a very real way. And, and having a cultural affairs department actually as part of the city government would be a wonderful step towards that goal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, honorable uh, mayor, city council members, staff. My name is Marek Jidan. Um, try to be quick. Art, in general, belongs to the people, not to the organizations. And we, I think we're all aware of that. And also, art finds its ways to be created, regardless of the even the least desirable environments. 
And that precise, precise environment is my topic. The environment for art, um, even if it exists in times like this, where we have a lot of freedom and prosperity, um, it's based on a big role of the government. The government provides the crucial assistant, assistance to the environment for art. People on their own cannot build opera houses or municipal art galleries. We, the Long Beach residents, and our government together can. The way we can provide the environment for art may, will make art blossom and will get Long Beach culture out to the world. The way I imagine the perfect art organization is such that it recognizes, promotes, and nurtures our own Long Beach artists. It creates links and two-way highways to communicate, finance, and inspire new art projects. It is an organization that is friendly to the community, accessible, and 100% transparent. After almost 20 years working as an art activist, I feel that today's Arts Council for Long Beach hasn't really done much of that. It's a problem. It leaves Long Beach artists without support from, the, from its own government. I believe Long Beach has matured to invest consciously in its cultural heritage. Even more than that, I believe that Long Beach is aware of the great role of its art as a tool to share our Long Beach art, uh, art culture with the world. I think we are ready for our own true, passionate, engaged, and all-inclusive, honest-to-art, brand-new culture affairs department. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. My name is Gary Alvarez. I am an independent filmmaker based in Long Beach. I've been a resident of Long Beach for 12 years now. Um, and uh, my filmmaking career started as a student at Long Beach City College, where I wrote produced and directed short films, shooting on location from everywhere from Signal Hill to Pier Point Landing to Bluff Park and everywhere in between. Um, after Long Beach City, I moved on to Chapman University where I pursued an MFA in film production. Um, I'm back, I'm, I graduated, and I'm working as independent filmmaker now. I have a documentary based on VIP Records, uh, a Long Beach landmark that I would like to um, produce. I started to shoot some of it, and I'm here to ask for the community support and the city council support to finish it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hatuna paigu to ki kanguna manzuna masis an chakusis rakani kauna wang kasaita. Es un un saludo de de mi lengua nativa Kichwa comes from the Incas. Um, last week, I just finished to paint a mural in the school with the eighth graders. It was a wonderful experience with them. And I learned a lot with them. And it's amazing to see the students, how passion, how passion they have to do for paint. And after, later, when I see the kids paint like that, the sadness come to me. It is no art in schools. That is, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. That broke my heart. But the artists, community artists, we can do that. We can uh, have that responsibility for do art in the schools. We are ready for that. But we need help. I want to share a little bit quickly with you. Um, in Bolivia, with my country, um, the artists, we have a house. Tenemos una casa donde los artistas podemos um, reunirnos para planificar, para conversar, 
para ver qué es lo que necesita nuestro pueblo, nuestra ciudad, nuestra comunidad. Y tenemos bastante apoyo, we have support from the city. Nos, no pagamos impuestos los artistas, eso es una ayuda inmensa. Nos, nos dan una casa, un sitio donde podemos exponer nuestra obra y podemos compartir con la comunidad, eso es una gran ayuda para nosotros. Y la Casa de la Cultura también tiene ambientes donde nosotros, los obreros del arte, podemos exponer nuestra obra y donde la comunidad puede venir a ver y donde ustedes también pueden, o la, las autoridades pueden venir a ver. Digo, ¿será que podemos hacer eso aquí? Thank you so much. Thanks, Ramón. Next speaker, please. Before we speak, I'm going to close the speakers list. So unless we have anybody else uh, behind Antonio, I'm going to close that speakers list. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, good, good evening, uh, uh, May, honored mayor, honored vice mayor, and members of the council. Uh, good evening, fellow citizens and friends. I am, uh, my name is Eric Nagash. I'm a local um, Long Beach artist uh, slash recording producer, whatever you want to call that. Um, but I've been here in Long Beach over the majority of my, my adult life um, after uh, having performed on national television and working with platinum artists and whatnot. When I came to Long Beach, I spent several years here trying, working to become established, and it was through the efforts of people who have mentored me, who have, uh, you know, members of CALB, um, like Karen, um, and, and, and also people who are not members of CALB, like, like Liza, um, you know, who, have, who helped me get direction and focus. My goal is to work to create a platform for at-risk youth. And I actually, before I go any further, I wanted to applaud the Arts Council uh, for making mention of the, of the effort to sort of bridge the gap between different parts of Long Beach and bring more representation and diversity. Um, one thing that I, I will definitely say is that I, I haven't ever, I don't think I've, no, I've never been to an Arts Council meeting, um, although I've been a resident here for over 10 years. Um, and I've, you know, one, one thing I would love to see is if we could have a cultural affairs committee that could develop some metrics which allow uh, artists to be nurtured in a meaningful way in order to get their foot off the ground and not just run their wheels or feel like they have to go to another part of the city in order to take advantage of the, the great um, opportunities in this wonderful city that we, that we call home. Um, I just wanted to uh, applaud uh, so many people who have come together today as a point of interest because arts does, is, a, is an instrument for healing. I can attest to that. You know, um, I really just wanted to applaud the city, the mayor, um, who before he became mayor, I saw in the arts galleries actually advocating on behalf of artists. That inspired me to want to stay here. Um, not to get all political or anything like that, but um, um, I just want to say much love to you all. I, I, I look forward to, to seeing your creations, my fellow artists and whatnot, and um, con continue to see uh, in interest in the arts and what it can do to help people and create platforms for people who don't necessarily have as much of a voice. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Uh, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, council, mayor, and uh, all the uh, representatives, elected officials uh, here present. And uh, I feel unprepared after hearing so many eloquent speakers. Um, I've been here for uh, most of my life, on and off, and uh, local artist Jim Koch uh, uh, from the 4th District. Um, if art is going to be seen as part of an economic development plan, um, the artists have to survive uh, with a little, with a lot more support. Uh, artists give. Um, you know, we need more, especially the youth. The youth has been ignored, and I know it's there's economic problems. But priorities, if you're going to start, start at the youngest possible place. Long Beach, in connection with, with this, also, I believe, has the lowest per capita acreage of parks in the country for a city its size, and especially most of the city. I live over by El Dorado Park. The, you know, if you exclude that, 
Uh, it's really a, a serious situation to create some places that are safe for kids, youth, let's call it, to participate in productive, positive activities and interact with mentors, and the artists are ready for that. Uh, it, it could be an exterior park, it could be a place like PAL where I taught, I taught photography there. It's no longer a program. I, we had the whole uh, community room at the police department filled with their photography for several years. It disappeared. I called up. It took me about three months to find out it was thrown away in the trash. Um, there has to be some more respect at all levels in all departments. And I, I respectfully ask that this, ta this is be taken very seriously. Um, I noticed, you know, when I was a teacher, I taught special ed, uh, there were no cell phones in the class. <laughs> you can't talk while someone else is talking, the teacher. You can't look at your iPad or call somebody or text. So please, the respect that we need has to begin here and it has to begin on the foundation level. And I know you're all capable of doing that, even desirous maybe, but the priorities have to be set. Uh, very seriously and very soon. And I, like in one second, I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. This is our last speaker. The speaking list is closed. Good evening. My name is Antonio Ruiz. I'm publisher of uh, new bilingual magazine, Palacio. I'm also a former member of the Arts Council Board and a member of several task forces, including the one that wrote the last cultural master plan and the mayor's task force on funding for the arts. In a recent editorial for Palacio, I stated that it was time once again to reimagine the arts in Long Beach. We called for an honest consideration of the formation of a city cultural arts department and an accompanying arts commission where its members are chosen by the mayor and approved by the council. I was part of a group of partners who organized a town hall meeting at the Museum of Latin American Art in 2007 called Reimagining the Arts in Long Beach. That all-day forum led to the updating of the city's cultural master plan, which was called Create Long Beach, and eventually its integration into the Long Beach 2030 master plan. If it had been fully implemented, we would be having a different conversation today. One of the most important goals in Create Long Beach revolved around creating an inclusive arts council and an arts constituency. Long Beach was just named the second most diverse city after Los Angeles. You will not find that diversity on the board of directors or the staff of the Arts Council. Mayor Robert Garcia, in a recent interview with Palacio Magazine, spoke about his goal to make city board and commissions better reflect the demographics of Long Beach. I know he was sincere when he said he wanted to ensure that many formerly unheard city voices are finally included in the body politic. This is not a call to dismantle the Arts Council for Long Beach. It is a call for rethinking our art support model in order to guarantee accountability, ensure diversity that is reflective of the communities it serves, and incorporates an effective and proactive community engagement strategy. Many underserved communities need real partners in the arts. We believe other models may better serve those goals. I would recommend that the city convene a forum or a task force or even refer this matter to a city council committee for further discussion and recommendations. In the meantime, Palacio Magazine will continue to work with community members to discuss the important issues of diversity, accountability, and the future for the arts in Long Beach for all communities. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on now, I have a motion on the floor, and I'm going to uh, Council Member Urenka. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank all of you from the arts who came by to this evening to share your thoughts. Um, I want to basically acknowledge that I did meet with uh, Ms. Bryan when she first uh, got the position. Uh, that was right around the time that I became a council member. So we're, we're sharing uh, our own tenure at the same time. And I did uh, share my concerns with her, uh, many of those that have been expressed this evening. And I was re I'm pleased to hear tonight uh, a commitment from Ms. Bryan to address the issues of diversity, to address the issues of diverse programming as well with the Arts Council, because I think it's, it, that's where it starts. It starts uh, from the top and it goes down, and it, and it takes also a commitment from our arts people to make that commitment themselves to share 
and to uh, commit themselves towards making this Long Beach the, the arts capital of the world. That, that's what I would love to see. And I think Ms. Bryant has uh, expressed that commitment. And, I, and she's not only expressing it, she's uh, walking the talk. Um, with me, I, I wanna thank her for sharing with my office. Uh, we're gonna be having an event uh, coming up at um, Los Cerritos Park, July 18th, where we're gonna have a lecture by Gregorio Luque on the uh, interactive mariachi. So it's gonna be a lecture with music uh, that we're gonna have a mariachi group out there and he's gonna talk about the history of the mariachi grand, uh, band, not band, type of music <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in Mexican culture. So uh, uh, that is a start and I hope that uh, in the future we could see many more events like that dealing with not only the Latino culture, the Mexican culture, but also with the African American, the Asian, and all the wonderful colors that we have uh, in this wonderful world of ours. And uh, again, I wanna thank you for, for that commitment to us. And uh, as I would say in Spanish, adelante, let's go forward. Thank you, Councilmember Superna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all the speakers for presenting here tonight. And particularly the last two who happen to be fourth district residents, Antonio, thank you for being here tonight. And Jim Coke, thank you, Jim. And for those of you who do not know Jim Coke, he is the artist who created the Flying Morrison mural across from Fingerprints, also the photographer who took the original photograph of Jim Morrison in 1967. I can't think of any other project that better illustrates the power of the, uh, of the arts. And thank you, Jim, for all you, that you do for that. Councilwoman Gonzalez. I just want to thank everyone as well for speaking. I think the Arts Council does some, some tremendous work as well as our artists in general. Um, I think this is a real live discussion that we'll continue to have. Um, I know I've personally worked with many of you. My office is just completely beautifully decorated with local artists and I'm very thankful for that. Um, even in my campaign, I had uh, local artists working uh, day in, day out. You know, so it's been wonderful. It's a great part of our, 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 our city, but I don't think this discussion is over. I know uh, youth, I hear access to grants, which is very important in making sure that that remains clear for artists, uh, and also just a, a better marketing mechanism, which I know April has addressed. So um, I just see this uh, discussion continuing, and thank you on both sides for for bringing those issues uh, up, up front to us. Vice Mayor Lowenthal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I wanted to thank everyone that came out to speak as well. And I appreciate the Arts Council, especially the statement about diversity and diversity in arts as well as diversity in our community. I think just the mere fact that we have individuals that feel that they are not a part of how, how diversity is being reflected in our arts culture here, or at least our focus, that's, that's of concern to me, and I know that this body is concerned about that. And so we do have to have a larger conversation, and Antonio, you're right, you've been a part of the recommendations, the conversations, I've been there, Council Member Gonzalez has been there, and so has the mayor. Oftentimes we're compared to cities that have departments of cultural arts, they have city departments that are able to house the arts and focus on the arts, and we're not that city just yet. So I'm not sure how we're going to get there. I do know that there's an interest in the community, and I know that there's an interest on this body to provide as much support as possible. But I think, honestly, I don't know how we get there in the resource-tight times that we have. And so that's my honest thought to on that matter, I know we've looked at different ways to raise revenue in order to be able to move toward that. And again, it might be a time to consider those recommendations again. I don't know that we need to put another task force together to come up with recommendations. You've done a lot of work. So it may be time to look at that again, and I'm certainly open to that conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Price. I want to thank everyone for coming out, and um, I really want to 
um, highlight and thank April for her comments about celebrating the diversity and building programs around diversity and the different, uh, and I'm speaking specifically in, in regards to diversity of art. Um, I think that's a very important concept. I know that um, we have a third district uh, representative working with you and we're very excited to be part of that process. And um, I wanna thank everyone who came out and, and hope that um, all the groups are able to work collaboratively together to enhance the arts. I do agree um, with some of the statements that were made tonight that, that art is um, not only something that we celebrate as a community and encourage, but also um, I think it serves as, a, as an economic development factor. I really do. Um, having a strong arts community, having access to art, having um, art displayed in public places, um, celebrating the arts is something that you see consistently, consistently among um, thriving urban communities. So um, I, I, I think that the two things go hand in hand. They're not mutually exclusive. So I wanna thank everyone for coming and I really wanna thank you for your mid-year report. It was very well done and um, rarely do we get a mid-year report um, when we allocate funds. So um, strategically that was really good timing of you because now we know that our money was put to somewhat of good use. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Richard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Victoria, the entire arts community, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I also want to say that, um, you know, over the last year or so, or two years, we've gotten to know the Arts Council through the A-Lot initiative in, in the 9th District. And um, when Victoria says she's sincere about uh, expanding diversity on her board, I'm going to take her out a word for it, and I'm going to help her by offering um, experts and uh, partners and residents in the district who have emerged over the last few years to have a real passion for this. I'm going to offer them to, the, to, to come to the table and be part of your part of your council. So as always, count on me as a resource. Um, I do want to see this this become more inclusive of the community. Um, you know, uh, there's certainly a thirst around the entire city for arts. Our youth will tell you it's essential and everybody on the council can tell you it's essential to neighborhood revitalization which a number of our areas of town are really focused on so um so i i, I hear a loud and clear and i hear very very uh solid commitment and i'm happy with that thanks again for coming out tonight councilman mongo arts is a big part of our economy and anyone who knows how jobs are driven in the region they know that art is a big component of that um, thank you all for coming tonight thank you for your mid-year report and most importantly, if you have art that you'd like to place in the 5th District, um, I have some locations that we've already been looking at, and we'd love to partner with you. Let's get art on the east side. Thank you, Councilman Andrew. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And I also would like to thank the Arts Council for coming here tonight. But uh, I'm looking at some things and seeing things. It really it kind of bothers me also because we're speaking about diversity, and if a picture is like a 1,000 words, I haven't seen that tonight. And I'm just hoping that you will be true to your word and bring that even not only to all the other, but I haven't, in the sixth district, I'd like for you to come there also. And, and, and uh, I hear the other part of the individuals because we have to be able to work together, especially when we're dealing with arts. I think it's essential for all our kids and everyone in, this, you know, in the city of Long Beach. So I would like to hold you to that and I hope that you can follow through with what you said tonight. And I'm sure the other individuals also. And thank you individuals for coming out and sharing your opinions. Thank you. Councilman Broston. Yes, I'd like to join with my colleagues in thanking you all for coming out uh, this evening. I really am impressed with the mid-year report as well. It shows great accountability. Um, you know, I I'm willing to give you a, a chance to, uh, to, to, to address the concerns of uh, those in the arts community. I have great um, respect for, for CALB. They've partnered with me and my district um, for Second Sundays and, and other events. Um, over the last uh, couple of years. Um, I look forward to greater partnership with the Arts Council. You've used the Expo Arts Center for your award ceremonies uh, a couple of years in a row. Um, we invite you back because it is the Expo Arts Center and we are a hub for arts in Uptown. Um, yes, arts are very important to the development of our, our economy, but also to our youth and, and uh, to our, our spirit as, 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 uh, as human beings. Um, I'm an artist myself. Um, and uh, I don't think I'd be sitting here today, and I won't think I'd be the person if I, that I am today if it weren't for arts being introduced to me at a very young age. So thank you for all you do, and will continue to do for our city. And uh, we look forward to working with you to uh, 
make arts a make this a mecca for arts in, in Southern California. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm just gonna close and say a few things. First, I did not know that you were an artist, so I look forward to either seeing your art or seeing you perform it or or sing or whatever. All right, but I'm I'm selling tickets. Okay. <laughs> Alan, I are perform it. That's good. That's our first fundraiser for the arts community. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to make some closing comments. I wasn't going to, you know, to say much tonight, but I, I, there's been a lot of conversation, so I just want to want to say a few things. Uh, the first is I want to just to, you know, the artists that are here. I just want to thank you for sticking it out. It's not easy being an artist uh, in any environment, and you all make Long Beach a more a, a more beautiful place, a more colorful place. Uh, what will the world be without art? And so let's give the artists a round of applause for, for being here. I, I also wanna, wanna say that I think, now I'm, I'm a big believer in um, when, a, when a new group or a new leadership comes on board, uh, allowing that leadership an, an opportunity to uh, put their best foot forward, to make the changes that are, that are necessary, and then to uh, hold hold those leaders also accountable for progress and how we're doing. And I think that one thing about uh, the Arts Council uh, is I've had numerous opportunities to have good conversations with Victoria, the, the leader of the, of the organization. And I think that she, at least from my point of view, has heard out what I think is important for us to move forward and to change. Uh, no organization is perfect. The Arts Council is not. And I think has traditionally uh, there has been a, um, a difficult relationship in the past with the Arts Council and the general artist community. There is no question. Antonio, you and I have had this conversation over 10 years about uh, the Arts Council and the changes. And uh, things are, aren't perfect right now, nor are they in any organization, but I do believe personally that there is a willingness to adapt and to make changes and to continuously improve and I think that's something that I'm hearing from the Arts Council. Uh, I have shared my personal points of view on uh, the diversity question that we've talked a lot about tonight that we've heard from artists and from CALB. I think that the, the Arts Council has heard that very clearly, not just from members of the council in private, but also tonight. And so I think that's something that we look forward to seeing de develop. In addition, uh, you know, and I see, um, you know, Karen, you do great work at Cal. I mean, you know, we're neighbors, as you know, and uh, just amazing work the way you've activated that space. And I know that oftentimes you're very frustrated because you love what you do so much and you love the artist more than anything else. So uh, believe me that uh, I believe that th this council is interested in a robust, diverse, uh, sustainable, arts program that supports our artists in the city. I think we're all, we're all interested in that. Uh, whether uh, we're sitting at the, at the Arts Council or whether we're the, you know, the artists, we're, we all want that. We just gotta, we gotta get there. So w what does that mean? I think it involves some, some reform and some changes at the Arts Council. I think they know that. It also involves uh, an examination of what does public support for the arts look like? I think we know that. That's a difficult question, particularly when you have tough economic times. But it also includes having some tough conversations about how we have traditionally funded the arts in the past and how we will in the future. And I will say the Arts Council uh, is looking at that, partly at, some, at, the, at my direction and as well as other conversations we've had of, of how we can structure a future support for the arts in a way that could work for Long Beach. And so I don't have all the answers, uh, it's a tough uh, environment for, for a lot of people, but just know that you have allies and we're all in it together. Okay, so thank you guys for coming out. And I wanna thank you for enlightening, enlightening us and I think enlightening everyone in the room. And I particularly wanna thank the Arts Council for coming out and giving this report. And we wish you the very best and look forward to hearing about all the changes and developments over the course of the next few months. Thank you all. Can I get, can you please cast your votes on the item? So it was a motion to receive and file. Councilman Andrews. Motion carries 9-0.